What's going on, everybody? Josh Engelman for AwesomeMode.com, and I am back with my NBA DFS contenders on DraftKings for Tuesday, March 2nd. Now, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell so you know when this and all of our other content goes live. Follow me on Twitter, at Josh Engelman, so you can get updates to my sim results as we get closer to lock. And finally, let me know in the comments section who are your favorite options on DraftKings for tonight's slate. Let me know who are your favorite contenders, who are your least favorite contenders. I want to know it all. Let me know in the comments. We round out the bottom of my top 10 with Russell Westbrook, Kawhi Leonard, Nikola Jokic, Giannis Antetokounmpo, and Brooke Lopez on the outside looking in. Who will be my favorites, my top five plays for today? It is time to find out. First up, number five, point guard, shooting guard eligibility, Monty Morris. He's 4,600, projected for 24 and a half. The goal is 38. He's in the optimal lineup 21% of the time. Uh, now that RJ Hampton has been out and we have this li laundry list of guys out for Denver, Monty Morris is pretty firm in the 30 plus minute range. All these starters ran north of 30 these last two times out. He's normally a 0.83 fantasy point per minute guy, but when he's playing so many minutes alongside Murray and Porter and Jokic, I actually have him in at 0.75, 17% usage, almost 13 points, four assists, two and a half boards, slight pace up spot against Milwaukee. But what you're really getting here is multi-position eligibility and 30 plus minutes at a relatively low salary on a day where we don't really have excess value on DK, but we do have quite a few pay-up options. That's why you see Giannis, Jokic, Kawhi, and Russell Westbrook all at the bottom of this list. It's hard to pay all the way up, so you need to make some concessions, and I think betting on Monty Morris's minutes is a decent way to do that. Next up, one of my favorites, Point guard and small forward eligibility, you know how I love the guard forward. It's Justice Winslow. He's 3,900, projected for 21. The goal is 36, optimal lineup 25% of the time. Now, I have him in for 24 minutes. I think that might be a little bit optimistic, but it's something I'm going to pay attention to throughout the day. Take the pulse of the industry as well. 0.87 fantasy points per minute, 10, 4, and 2 with a stock. But the real big piece here, it's a massive pace up spot against Washington. They gain four possessions over their average. So even though I don't think Winslow has upside in minutes, the pace of this game lets me think that he can get to 36 fantasy points. That's not crazy. It's not my favorite thing in the world for sure. But because he's point guard small forward and sub 4K in this massive pace up spot, he makes things a little bit easier in terms of getting to the other high price studs. Point guard, small forward, guard, forward, utility. You can use him in five different places. That's perfect. What else could you really want other than more minutes? So here's where we stand right now. I like Justice Winslow. I expect him to come down in ranking throughout the day as more value opens up. But for right now, number four. We're staying in Memphis and we're doing basically the exact same thing. Desmond Bain, shooting guard, small forward eligibility, just 3,400, projected for 19 and a half, goals 34, optimal lineup 28% of the time. I have him in for 24 minutes. He got the start the last time. We were waiting for Kyle Anderson news. Kyle Anderson is questionable. If he's out, this could look a little bit different. I don't really know how to project Desmond Bain's minutes yet. I think that the upside in minutes here is way different than Winslow. Bain could play 28 to 30 minutes in this spot, even with Kyle Anderson in. Basically a 0.8 fantasy point per minute guy. It's mostly scoring. 11 and a half points, three boards, assist and a half, maybe a stock. But again, that big pace up spot. The real key piece though, is that I have him in for 24 minutes. I'd be shocked if it's lower, but I see the upside. And if you can get him in shooting guard, small forward, guard forward, utility, that's another spot where you can move these guys around and have a really malleable lineup construction. So I'm liking getting to these two Grizzlies so that I can better allocate more ownership to Giannis, to Jokic, to Kawhi, to Russ. You got to get to some of these Grizzlies value plays, but keep an eye on Kyle Anderson. If he ends up out, there's going to be a ton of value to be found in Memphis. Now, my number one contender on FanDuel is my number two contender on DraftKings, and that's basically because he's only center eligible. 5,200 for Nerlens Noel, projected for 30. The goal is 40. He's in the optimal lineup 29% of the time. Noel has played 40 minutes the past two games, each, not added together. No Mitchell Robinson, no Taj Gibson. I can't project him for 40. I can't even project him for 36 with confidence. But if I project him for 33... He still shows up as the number two contender here and the number one contender on FanDuel by a mile. 
Less than a fantasy point per minute, too, I might add. Uh, he's normally one a uh, one fantasy point per minute guy, but on DraftKings, he's a little bit different. On FanDuel, that slight pays, plays to his strengths because of the three-point blocks and steals. Here on DraftKings, he's not as valuable, and he only has center eligibility. So I actually project him as a point nine guy on DK in comparison to FanDuel, where he's a full fantasy point per minute. Nine points, basically nine rebounds, four and a half stocks. Taken on San Antonio, you're not worried about the matchup. It's pace neutral. The only problem is the fact that he's center eligible and only center eligible. But 5,200 for Nerlens Noel with 30-minute floor in minutes. At least it should be, barring crazy foul trouble. And an upside of 40. You have to be here. There's no way around it. Nerlens Noel is too good of a value today. Now, before we get to number one, one last reminder. Hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell. Because why would you want to miss out on our videos? But the biggie, follow me on Twitter, at Josh Engelman. It's the only place that you can get updates to my sim results. I'm not on live before lock tonight, but I will have an update because I am playing this slate. I'm going to knock this one out of the park. I could feel it right on right my chest. I feel, I feel a big one coming today. So you don't want to miss out on the goods. Make sure you're following me on Twitter. And don't forget to let me know in the comments section who are your favorite and least favorite contenders for today's slate. And now the number one contender for today, Ja Morant, point guard eligibility, 7K, projected for 39, goal is 46, he's in the optimal lineup 31% of the time, 33 minutes, 1.2 fantasy points per minute in the massive pace up spot against the Wiz, 21, 7, and 4, a steal, and what I hope to be just a track meet of him and Russ and Beal running up and down the floor, taking every shot they possibly can find. I love getting to Ja because he's 7K. I think this price tag is just simply incorrect. I assume he's 7,700, 7,800 when we're coming back from the All-Star break. This price is absolutely going up. I want to be here before it does. I wish he had more eligibility, but 7K point guard Ja Morant doesn't matter. Even without the eligibility, he's the number one contender today. Alrighty, folks, that will do it. Those are my NBA DFS contenders on DraftKings for Tuesday. I almost said February, March 2nd. I will be on the strategy show today with Alex Baker. So tune in to that one. No live before lock though. So we'll be back tomorrow. Process show at 630 and another edition of the contenders. Good luck tonight, everybody. Have a good night.